Ah. Lord bless. Peace once again. Um, tonight's topic, you know, as you already know, I teach the Bible. And, um, you know, I try to keep it basic, try to keep it basic as to the classes that I'm teaching for now anyway. Um, so we continue in part two. We continue in part two of what does the Lord require of a man? What does the Lord require of a man? The nature of a man, right? So we want to go to the Bible, right? So for anybody looking at these videos, you get your Bible, King James 1611 Bible. And you have to study, man. You have to study the Bible because the Bible is a puzzle. The Bible is a puzzle. So I'm going to be breaking things down in parts breaking thing down in parts. Let's look at the book of uh, What do you mean? Let's look at um Let's look at uh 2 Timothy's. Let's look at 2 Timothy's. Right. So you have First Timothy and you have Second Timothy. You have Second Timothy. Everything is about studying. Second Timothy two verse fifteen. All right. Um. Hopefully everything is good, brother Lucky. Let me know. Um. All the screens look good. So everything about the Bible is studying, and who are we studying about? We studying about the Lord. And um, we try to make the kingdom of heaven. You know, we hope to make the kingdom of heaven. And that's the main most important thing. So that's why the Lord said this in 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. He says, study to show thyself approved. Okay. Um, I don't know anything about that. Um I don't know anything about that, why that's doing that. On my screen, everything is good. That might be on your side. Might be on your side, but on my screen, everything is good. So, um, you no, know, there's just a little technical, technical difficulty right now. So, you know, we in 2 Timothy 2, verse 15, the Lord says, study to show thyself approved unto the Lord, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay. So you got to divide the Bible. You have, you have to divide the Bible up, you know, um, to make it work for you. Having a little bit of view screen difficulty here. It's one thing, it's another. Ah, there it is a little bit better. So, you know, you have to study the Bible to make it work for you. So he says that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But then he comes back and he says, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. So what is he talking about profane and vain babblings that's philosophies okay he says leave those philosophies alone don't deal with them because they will increase unto more ungodliness they will clog your mind up with more stupidity okay more religious doctrines and so forth like that he's like yo don't deal with it is it clear now lucky everything's good on my side you understand so the lord is telling you and the thing is, are you following? The thing is, are you following? So the word of the Lord is the truth, okay? The word of the Lord is the truth, that's it. The word of the Lord is the truth. The thing is, the, the thing is, do you believe the word of the Lord? The thing is, do you believe the word of the Lord? Now, Satan's job 
there is a being called Satan that people don't believe exists. If you read the Bible and you believe in God and Christ, you have to believe in Satan because Satan does exist and he is there to make you believe in something else but then the word of the Lord. Let's look at that, right? So when you study it, all you got to do is go up into Revelation 12 verse 9. It says, and the great dragon, what great dragon? This being called Satan was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. Four names for him, four names for him, which deceived the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth and his angels was cast out with him. Okay? So now you get caught up into what Satan is throwing out there because what is Satan throwing out there? Satan is casting out water like a flood. 15 verse, Revelation 12 verse 15. And the serpent, Satan, cast out of his mouth water as a flood. So all the pollutants of religions and philosophies and doubts is like a flood. It's nasty. It's killing you. You're drinking unpure water. You're drinking unclean water. So if you're tapping into Roman Catholicism, if you're tapping it into doubt, if, if, if you're tapping it into whatever that you believe in and you don't believe in the word of the Lord, Satan got you. Satan got you. So you're not moving proper as a man. You understand what I'm saying? I see all these young boys out here now. They beating elderly people down. They beating elderly people down. That's not the way of the Lord. But that's the demonic state that the Lord said would exist in these last days and times. That's the demonic state. Because we are in the last days and times. Okay? That's why it says, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. So, in this cup, I got clean water. In this cup, I got clean water. I can drink this. But then, if I turn around, this is liquid. This is liquid. This, I can't drink this. This is liquid. I can't drink this. Okay? This will kill me. So this is the unclean water that Satan has cast out that people are drinking from philosophies, non-understandings of the Bible, and this is the problems that they're causing. Okay? This is the problems that they're causing. Part 2. Okay, so tonight's class, we're dealing with what? is the purpose that the Lord created a man for? What is the purpose that the Lord created a man for? So we're picking it up again. We're picking it up again. Let's go into, we went into Ecclesiastes. We went into, let's go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter. Let's go back to 1 Peter, the first chapter, the 14th and 15th verse. New Testament, 1 Peter. 1 Peter, the first chapter. The 14th and 15th verse. He says, but as he which have called you is holy. So the Most High is holy, man. The Most High is holy. So what you want to know as a man, you have to be holy. He says, so... Be ye holy in all manner of conversation. That's why he says shun profane and vain babblings. If you're getting into negative conversations about philosophy, religion, and all these different things, he's like, man, leave that alone, man. Leave that alone. Don't even deal with that. Shun that. Because those are vain and profane babblings. So as a man, he's telling you, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Keep your conversation high. Well, what do I mean by keep your conversation high? Keep a heavenly conversation. Let's let's look at that. Let's look at that. Your conversation is supposed to be heavenly, man. Your conversation is supposed to be heavenly. Let's drop back. Let's drop back.
one second. All right, here we go. Let's go to Philippians, the third chapter. The 20th verse. Now, now, now look at this, the 20th verse. It says, for our conversation is in heaven. Now, look at, um. let's come back to where we were. 1 Peter 1, verse 14 and 15. So be holy in all manner of conversation. Be holy as I am holy. As I am holy. So you got to be holy in your thinking. You got to be holy in your thoughts, man. You, you have to be holy. Holy means true. Holy means true. It's not some religious madness. You have to be true. Okay? You have to be true. Holy means true. Not dealing with lies. Not dealing with lies. You know? So look at that. Philippians, the third chapter. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord, the Christ. So why should we look for him? Why should we pay attention to him? Who shall change our vile body? So you want your body to change. You want your body to change. That's why you changing as a man now. That's why you changing as a man now or a woman. Who shall change our vile bodies that it may be fashioned like into his glorious body according to the working where he's able to even to subdue all things unto himself. See that? So that's why as a man now or as a woman, you study in number one and number two, you're putting that to work. You're putting that to work. Matthew 6, verse 33. Now, what does the Lord require of a man? Let's go to Matthew, the 6th chapter, and the 33rd verse. Let's see what the Lord requires of a man. He says, but seek ye first, if, if you are about the Lord, he says, but seek you first the kingdom of the Lord and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So how do you seek the kingdom as a man that you say you believe in the Lord? How do you seek the kingdom of the Most High? Look at the 19th verse. He says, but lay not for yourselves treasures upon earth. That means you care about things upon the earth. You care about things about these actors, DMX and all these different cats and whatever. That's that. That's what he's talking about. I don't give a damn about these dudes. They dead. When when these dudes was up and living and living good, they didn't care about you. They didn't care about you. They was living in all their wickedness, and now everybody care about them. All of them. All of them. Actors, whoever that you care about and you glorify. The Lord said, "Love not this world, man." So as a man, I'm just passing through this world. I'm just passing through using it as I'm supposed to, okay? Using it as I'm supposed to. So he says, in Matthew 6, and so you want to get to the kingdom of heaven, he says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth where moth and wrath and rust do corrupt and neither and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust do corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, what you care about. See that? So he's telling you, don't care about this world. For you to lay up treasures, you got to care about the other world. You got to care about the other world. For where your treasure is, what you really care about. What does a lot of people really care about? That's what you're going to go after. What a lot of people really care about, that's what they go after. That's why when people want to get a car or they want to get a house, you know, they work and they work and they 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 bend their whole spirit to acquire these earthly things. To, to acquire these earthly things because it makes them feel good. So the Lord is saying, for where your treasure is something that you care about, there your heart, that's why you put your whole heart and your spirit to it. There your heart will be also. 
So that's how, if you as a man now is bending towards the Lord, you're supposed to care towards the kingdom. You're supposed to care towards the kingdom. Now, how do we know you're supposed to care towards the kingdom? This is part three. This is part three. How do we know that you're supposed to care towards the kingdom and not to earthly things? Let's go up in the book of Hebrews right quick. Let's go up in the book of Hebrews right quick. Let's go in the book of Hebrews. The 11th chapter. Okay. Hebrews 11 chapter. So do we have faith? Do we have faith? Do we have faith? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders retained a good report. You got to have faith, man. You got to believe. You got to believe in something that you don't see. You got to believe in something. Listen to what he's telling you. You got to believe in something that you don't see. He says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of the Lord. And who is the word of the Lord? Christ. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So they were made by things which are not seen. Okay. So now, what does it mean by faith? Let's jump down to the 10th verse. It says, For he looked for a city, which had foundations whose builder and maker is the most high. So that's what you got to be putting your faith into. You don't see this city, but you got to read and believe that it's coming. It says, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged, ju she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there up even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky and the multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable, talking about Israel. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were persuaded of them. So if you're really into the truth, you're not looking for tangible things right now that you can hold on to. You're looking for things that you cannot see. And you got to be persuaded. So that's how you as a man got to believe. What does the Lord want of a man? He wants you to believe that he is. And he's going to make it happen. But now that's why the scripture says, here is the patience and faith of the saints. Because the Lord is putting you through tests now. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. See that? That's what the Lord is doing. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out of, so you're trying to come out of here. As a man trying to change, the Lord is telling you to come out of here, my people. Come out of here how? Here. Here. You got to come out of uh, here. You can't pick up and leave this country. Because this country controls the world. Satan controls the world. That's why this word is called USA, under Satan's authority. It says, For days that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out. So if you cared about America, they might have had that opportunity to have returned. Just like, Lot, just like Lot's wife did. She was mindful of Sodom and Gomorrah. So she got destroyed. So you can't be mindful of this place as a man that's seeking the most high. You can't be mindful of this place. But now they desire a better country that is in heavenly, which the Lord is not ashamed to be called their God. For he had prepared for them a city. See that? So now you got to have that faith of moving out and getting a change. So, if you truly 
about changing and being that man or that woman of the Lord. You got to change, man. You got to change. You got to understand, yeah, I'm in a sinful body. Yeah, I'm in a sinful body. Matter of fact, let me give you an opinion, uh, an epiphany. Not an opinion. Let me give you an epiphany of change. There are certain verses in here that speak to me all the time in my daily walk. One of them is love your enemies. So let me go to that. Let me show you about changing and being a man of the Lord, okay, in some form and fashion. Let's go up in the book of Matthew. Matthew uh, 5, verse 43. So the Savior said unto them, You have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. And do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So what does that mean to me? Now, I can't walk around with the Bible all day in my hand trying to live these verses, but I live it in my daily life. So there's brothers in the gym or people in the gym that do not like me for whatever reason. But you know what I've done in the spirit? I have smashed them with what? Love. See that? I have smashed them with love. No, I'm not kissing their behind. But when I see them, I say, may the Lord bless you when I talk to them. And it's smashing them down. So one brother, you know, me and him had a little thing a couple of years ago. You know, it was stupid. It was stupid. Okay? But we hadn't spoken to each other over a year. All right? And um, in the spirit, we made up like three weeks ago. And I said, look, man. I walked up to him and I said, look, brother. May the Lord bless you. He said, OG, man, it ain't nothing, man. Let's just drop that. And the doors open. See, you're taking that weight up off of you, man. You're taking that weight up off of you. Let them deal with that. Let them deal with that negativity, man. Let them deal with that negativity. Four. Let them deal with that negative. So when you change it, right, he says, bless them. That curse you. So everybody in the gym whether they like me or don't like me, since I have to be there, I bless them all the time. I deal with them correctly. Now, I know that there's people that don't like me in there. I heard about it. Why? I didn't do anything to you. I'm not taking anything from you. I don't own the gym. But that's the nature of our people. The, the nature of our people is to be inherently evil. Yes, that's what I said. The nature of our people is to be inherently evil. The Lord said that. I would have to find a verse and show you that. But look what he says. That you may be the children of your father, which is in heaven. For he make it his son to rise on the evil and on the good. See that? The Lord make the sun above to shine on everybody. So you ain't no greater than nobody else. You're not, even if you never committed a murder, you know no greater than the murderers because the sun shine on them too. If you never stole, you ain't no better than the thieves or the this or the that. Because the sun shine on them too. The sun don't shine just on you alone. The sun don't shine on just you alone. So look what he says. 45th verse, Matthew 5 verse 45 that you may be the child of your father. So if you really about change, that's why he said this in Matthew 17, verse 5. This is what the, the Mosai said, Matthew 17, verse 5. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, this is my beloved son. 
Now, this is the most high letting us know something. That Christ, the black man, Revelation 1, 14 and 15, is his beloved son. Now, look at the law that he's about to put down. He says, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. He just gave us a law, a command, an order, and he said, listen to my son. So now the son in Matthew, the fifth chapter, is letting you know that for you to become a son of the Lord, you got to change. That you may be the children of your father, which is in heaven, for he make it the son to rise on the evil and on the good. He send it rain on the just and on the unjust. So the Lord don't pick and choose where his rain is going to fall. Where the rain going to fall. But the test is for you to see if you are changing. The test is on you to see if you are changing. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? So I talk to everybody. I talk to everybody. I'm respectful to everybody. People in the streets. You know. I say excuse me. I have courtesy. Etiquette. These are the manners and the nature of a prince. When you say that you are a man of God. You're supposed to be a prince, man. You're supposed to be a prince and moving like a prince. Uplifting yourself and uplifting the people that is around you within your circumference. So he says the 48th verse, by doing this, he says, be therefore perfect, even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. So he didn't pick and choose. He didn't pick and choose. He knew that there was people that hated him. He didn't pick and choose. So if you say you are a follower of the Christ, then you got to do. Now the thing is, are you really, truly changing? Are you really, truly changing? But let me ask you a question. When you see poor and homeless people on the street, do you buy them a dinner or something? Do you buy them a dinner or you just walk by them that little five dollars that you're going to use and spend and waste. You couldn't buy them a dinner. You couldn't set something up. The Savior fed people, thousands of people, man. He fed them with wine and fish created with, with, with the magic of the Most High, man. He took care of you. He didn't just say, come and listen to me and now... That's the end of the story. No, he said, sit down. I'm going to take care of you. How many of you are really like that? How many of you are really like that, man? Caring. But yet you want forgiveness in, in that time. Yet you want forgiveness. Let's look at that. Let's go back in Matthew. Matthew, the sixth chapter. The ninth verse. He says this. After this manner therefore pray ye. Do you pray? Do you pray? Our Father which art in heaven. What God do you call on? What God do you call on? Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. What name? I am. The most high. The ancient of days. That's his name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on in earth. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. See that? So he gives you your daily bread. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. Because we owe him a debt. We are in debt to him. So we are supposed to forgive others that owe us. Do you forgive? The nature of being a man of the Lord. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Now look what the Christ said. For if you forgive men their trespasses, 
Are you that humble that you are willing to forgive? Your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So if you want to be saved, if you want to be saved, if you want to make the kingdom of heaven, these are the natures that, like clothes, you got to put on. Like clothes, you got to put on. Okay. Five. These are the clothes that you have to be willing to put on. Let's look at another verse. As a man changes into being to see what the Lord wants or requires of man. Let's go to Proverbs 6, verse 21, verse 23. So what are we doing when we study in the Bible? Proverbs 6, verse 21 to 23. Proverbs 6, chapter 21 to 23. He says, I'm going to start at 20. He says, My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them up continually upon thine heart and tie them around your neck. Okay? When thou goest, it shall lead thee. See, so when you put the Most High and his son in front. Now, wh wh what does he mean by that? So when you put the son, how do we know you have to put the son? Let's go up in the book of uh, John. Let's go up in the book of John. Watch how you got to put the sun. Okay? Let's go up in the book of John. John 3, verse 14. Now, look at Proverbs, right? Proverbs says... Bind them up continually and tie them around thy neck. And when thou goest, it shall lead thee. And when thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it will talk with thee. Okay? Now, let's go to John 3, verse 14. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So the Son of Man, you got to put him in front of you. You got to lift him up. So when I deal with people out in the world, the Son of Man, by reading the Bible, by studying the Bible, the Son of Man now goes before me. Unseen, the Son of Man goes before me. By studying the Bible, when I see situations uh, popping off in front of me, the Son of Man, the Scriptures, teaches me how to move. That's how you change, how you become a son of the Lord. Okay, when thou goest, for the commandment is a lamp. Why? Because we are in darkness. 23rd verse. Darkness, so there's light here, but it's really dark light. It's really dark light. It's really dark light. But the Bible is the light through the darkness. And the law is light. And the reproofs of instructions are the ways of life. So you got to be ready and willing to be reproved through the scriptures. A man that is willing to change got to be willing to listen to the scriptures as long as they are correct and be reproved. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Let's look at that right quick. I'm going to do a class also on this topic. Uh, it's been bothering me for a while. I hear a lot of people talk about it. For the love of money is the root of all evil. And people twist that around, you know, talk about money is the root of all evil. No, money is not the root. Of, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says for the love of money, which is talking about you, the nature that is in you. All right. So let's look at the purpose of the Bible. 
Let's look at the purpose of the Bible if you're willing to change. This is uh, 2 Timothy, the third chapter, 15, 16, and 17 verse. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. See that? From a child. And are able to make, which are able to, so the Bible is the Holy Scriptures, is able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus, a black man, right there. That picture is drawn based upon the Bible. Revelation, the first chapter, the 14th and 15th verse. All scripture is given by inspiration of the Lord. See that? The Lord wrote the scriptures and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction in what is right, righteousness. See that? That's the purpose of the scriptures. That the man may be perfect. So if you want to change, what does the Lord require of a man? All scripture is given by inspiration of the Lord. Why? And is profitable for doctrine. So my doctrine doesn't come something that I made up. It comes from the Bible. It comes from the Savior. It comes from the New Testament. It comes from the Gospels. For reproof. So I sometimes reprove people. For correction. For instruction in righteousness. Why? That a man of the Father may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Good. So now we leave that. That's why he says, for the commandment, Proverbs 6, verse 23, is a lamp. And the law is light, and the reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So if somebody's trying to save you and tell you the right thing to do, so they're instructing you. Okay. Now let's move on. Let's go to Matthew 8. Let's see another verse. Right? Matthew 8. Verse 11 and 12. When we talk about change, what is the most I want? Okay, um, wrong verse. We're still in Matthew 8, but it's not 11 and 12. It's Matthew 8, verse 22. You got to follow the Savior, man. Matthew 8, verse 22. Look what he says. He says, but the Savior said unto them, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. So if you're worried about other things, then you're not really changing. Six. If you're worried about other things, then you're not really changing. He says, Matthew 8, verse 22. He says, but the Savior said unto them, follow him. So where do you follow the Savior at? You got to go into the gospel. For you to be able to follow him, then you're becoming a disciple, a follower of him. You got to go into the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You can't go into the other books to learn of him. So, so he says, follow me. Follow me. And let the dead, the dead is, is not talking about physical people as dead. It's talking about people that's mentally dead because they are not alive. He's alive. So you got to follow him. You got to follow the Savior and leave them other people alone. Let them, they dead. He's like letting you know. So if you follow people that can't lead you nowhere, where do you think you're going? 
If a man poor, how he gonna lead you to riches? If a man poor, how he gonna lead you to riches? If that's what you desire. So I need to get to the kingdom of heaven. I need to get to the kingdom of heaven. Let's look at that. I need to get to the kingdom of heaven. Let's look at the book of Romans. Let, let's see why I follow the Christ. This is what, the, this is what, let's go to the book of Romans. This is why I follow the Christ. This is why I don't care about no man. Romans 6 verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. I don't want death no more. I don't want death no more. I'm already dying every day. Every day I wake up, I'm dying. My body's breaking down, man. I'm just basically sticking my finger in a dam, trying to stop the whole dam from breaking down. I'm sticking a finger here, trying to plaster something up here, trying to potch this hole here. That's all I'm doing. That's my body right now. But then he says this in Romans 6 verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, man. But the gift, listen to this well. Not something I work for. He's going to give a gift of the Lord from the Father is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, man. That's what you're supposed to want as you change, as you're trying to change. You're supposed to want eternal life. You know what eternal life is? Let's go in the book of Genesis. Let's, let's see what eternal life in a little aspect is. Let's go in the book of Genesis, the uh, the fifth chapter of Genesis. Let's look at this, Genesis, the fifth chapter. And the third, I'm going to start at the first verse. This is the book of the generations of Adam. The word Adam means taken from the earth. Black people, people of color, okay, were all called Adam. How do we know? Men and women were all called Adam. It's going to tell you. In the day that the Lord created man, in the likeness of the Lord made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day that they were created. What day was this? This was Genesis, the first chapter and the 26th verse. This is Genesis, the first chapter and the 26th verse. And the Lord said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion of the fish and over all the fowl of the air and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So the Lord created man in his own image. In the image of the Lord created he him. Male and female created he them. See that? So women weren't created from men. Men and women. The Lord created. See, this is the mystery that is in the Bible. You got to study this book. Male and female, the Lord created he them. And the Lord blessed them. And the Lord said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. So all this homosexuality and all this madness got smashed. There's no such thing. Okay? No lesbians, no transgender, all that madness in our lust that we do all got smashed. The Lord never did that in the procreation. So when you go to Genesis, the fifth chapter... When this was done in Genesis, the first chapter, and the 26th verse, the male and female that the Lord created, the thousands of them were all called Adam, meaning taken from the earth. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his likeness after his image and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth. Now, wait a minute. Check this out. His child Seth came and the days of Adam after he begotten Seth were 800 years and he begot sons and daughters. So when he had Seth, it was 130 years. 
You think he was old and broken up? No, he wasn't. And all the days that Adam lived was 930 years and he died. That's not even eternity. That's not even eternal life. That's one day with the Lord. A thousand years is one day. You should be seeking eternal life because eternal life, you don't die. Eternal life, you don't die. Change. What does the man? What does the Lord require of a man? Peace. Part two.